This photo is a lie, but it's also the most honest photo you're going to see today. How is that even possible? And to solve the question, we have to explore the idea of authenticity, because that is a foundational pillar of art. Now, I don't want to make this too philosophical or boring for you, so I'm going to start with a very visual example. I think all of us have attempted to write a travel journal. And it can go many ways, so I want to present you one way it could go. 8 a.m. I'm in the hotel lobby, I'm having coffee, bacon, toast, a muffin, some exotic fruit and a glass of orange juice. 8.30. I'm heading to the center of town on a bike taxi. Now, that is a shopping list of your life. It's not what you felt, it's not what you experienced, it doesn't have any context, it's just void of anything, but it's also true to the fact at the same time. And if this would be the true nature of photography, to be a honest witness, to be truly objective, to just record what is in front of the camera, there would be no you in the picture, but that is why we create art to share who we are and our emotion towards the world. So it is quite important to have something in there that is subjective, that is you. So here's another example of a journal. The golden roofs of Lao Prasat reveal themselves to me, like the ascension to the mythical Mount Meru. It's Delicate architecture and golden color are like a symphony that tries to carry me towards a higher understanding. Inside of the building, I find a collection of Buddhist quotes in an almost minimalistic interior. This makes clear to me that this temple wants me to look on the inside, to think about the very core of myself and maybe in the smallest way find an understanding that transcends me towards enlightenment. Now that is way more emotional. It gives you a perspective, it gives you a context, it gives you a view on how this person is feeling towards the temple they are visiting. So now we've seen two different versions. One is objectively true, the other one is subjectively true. Now, to be authentic means to be true to yourself. It means to connect your version of the world with the expression, with what you show to the world. And that also means that the world is not the same for all of us. It's not that we are a godly essence that is perfectly placed in here and that's just it. It means that the world has existed before us with its traditions, with its cultures, its politics, its religions, its problems, its solutions. And we are thrown in all of that. And we have to find a place and how we fit into that world. And this is our own place. Which means that while we share a physical reality, we don't share a personal reality because we are all ourselves in our very own bubbles. And the very means on how we connect to each other is through the different mediums. That can be anything. It can be text, it can be music, it can be a painting or a photo, it can be dance, any kind of thing, food, whatever you want. But this is how we communicate. This is how we show each other what the world means to us. So meaning is very important. The subjective perception and expressing that is very important to being authentic, to being honest about how you see the world. So it means that even a photo is not just that. It's not just a picture of whatever happened in front of the camera. I want to give you another very visual example of that. Imagine you see a photo of a newborn baby. Now, it doesn't mean anything. It's an empty picture. It could be a medical photo in a textbook, it could be a news photo, maybe about a war, it could be a photo of a family that has taken that picture, it could be a historic picture, you don't know, you have no context, so it's just that and you don't know what it means. Now, I want to rephrase that a little bit. This is the first photo that a father has taken of his newborn son. And suddenly, wow, context, meaning, emotion, relation, we understand it, we feel it, we are suddenly there. 
because now it has meaning to us that we can decode. Now the image has a purpose because we can connect to it. That is what it is all about. So this is where I want to connect today with augmented photography, as I call it. Now to do that, I want to shift your focus from just photography to social media photography, because social media photography is quite special in what it is. Now, the classic photo is a photo that you take for your family. You put it in the family album and everybody who sees it knows the people in the pictures, the places that we see in the pictures and what is going on. So if it is a Christmas event, you just stand in front of the Christmas tree, take a photo in together and that's it. It just documents what is happening because the information of what it is and what it means is in the people who look at the picture. So there doesn't have to be a specific visual language. You can just take a photo as a snapshot and that's it. Now, social media photography is very different from that. And I call it the me and now. Because what social media photography attempts to do is not to document your family life to your family. What it does is it wants to share a moment that you experience right now with the world. So it needs visual language because it has to create a visual story that can transmit what you feel as an emotion toward whatever you photograph. So often it's staged. You have a very dynamic pose. You have a very dynamic camera angle. You show what you're seeing in a way that is storytelling, that is dramatic, that has emotion in it. And it is also visual motion in it. And that is why it works. But at the same time, it is a photography that is not meant to be preserved, like the family photo that you put in the album. Because social media photography, most of the time, is done for the three-second gap, which means where you look at the photo, you give it a like, you write a nice comment maybe, and then you forget about it. And it's getting lost in the currents of social media. And that's it. Now, augmented social media photography is what I call the me and I. It's a paradigm shift. It's a new form of what photography can be. Let me explain how that works. The me and I points the camera inwards, and that is the transforming moment here. Rather than just photographing whatever is in front of your camera, now you can add elements that you see on the inside. You can add how you feel towards that object, that situation, and you can add a personal story. That might be an emotion, it might be a meme, it might be a personal impression or an inside joke. Now, you might say, I could have done that before. I can just do a sketch or something like that. But this is different. First of all, this is augmented. So it overlays itself with reality. It puts it in the direct relation to what is happening right there. But also the immediacy that AI can do it right now. And that is a very important part of social media that you don't do it five hours later or five days later. You do it right now. And the moment when you experience it so you can share it live with your friends or with your followers, that you have a moment together. This is very important. This is very different from the things that have happened before. And this is why this is a new form of photography and it's a new form of art on how we can connect and on how we can express our place in the world. Now, of course, you could argue that for you, photography is only what happens in front of the camera and what happens inside of the camera. And of course, that is your artistic choice. If you want to go about it that way, that's completely okay. But you couldn't argue that this is the only form of photography. What about the other forms of photography? For example, double exposure or contact photography or time delayed photography, flash photography. There's a lot of different ways of photography that are not what is happening in front of the camera, that are not just what is happening inside of the camera or don't use a camera at all. But then also I could argue that a camera itself is a replication of a cultural process, specifically the central perspective. But for the longest time of mankind and our culture, central perspective has not been a way to represent what is truly out there. It has been a very bland way to see reality because 
the pictures in the past, they have represented what was actually there in their perspective, which means, for example, that in a picture, the king is way bigger than the servant because he's way more important, or that different stages of your life happen at the same time in the same picture, but that is because it's all out there and it's all happening, it's all connected. So these are also true representations of what is happening. They are not photography, I'm not arguing that, but there's a lot of ways that photography can be and augmented photography is just one more of these ways. And that makes it a pretty wonderful medium to look inside of you and ask yourself, what do I see beyond just the image, beyond just what is going on in front of my eyes? How do I feel towards the world? And what is my very unique, personal connection to the world. This is why we use tools to set us apart from what just is and create a world that is meaningful to us and then create meaning together with them as a cultural exchange. The world just exists and exists very well without us. But us in the world means finding a purpose. And finding that purpose means to bring out what is inside of you. So. With this video, I want to invite you to just try it out. Feel the immediacy, bring out what you feel right now and put it right next to reality in a photo and see how this juxtaposition of imagination and a real photo correlate with each other and create maybe tension, create maybe unity, create something that is a completely new story. But it's your story and that's the important part about that. And with that, I want to say thank you very much for watching that video. Please leave some comments on how you think about that. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and see you soon. Bye.